God's hands on everything. He's in everything. He's about everything. He's about us. Amen. I want to thank the Lord this morning for speaking to us. You know, that he would pick us to speak to. Amen. Little old us. God has brought a message to us this morning. And so, I just want to take a few minutes. As I said earlier, God has been speaking to me about bringing a message. It's really going to be a, a two-parter. We're going to start today and we're going to end next week. But I would like you to put up, if you could put up the label of this message today, and I think it's very important that the church hear this message today. I believe God is speaking to his church today, and it's very, very important. We are living in a Babylon mentality. The world right now has a Babylon culture. It's called the Babylon culture. And it's in some of the churches. It is sad that it's in some of the churches. So as I said, for the next couple of weeks, we're going to address this culture and why it goes against everything of God. Are you with me, church? Now, I brought a message a few months ago, and I called it, what the Lord had said, he's calling his church out of Babylon. How many remember that message? God is calling his church out of Babylon. And in that, he had said, I asked him, I said, well, what is that, Lord? He said, it's been a mixture of the church and the world. That's not how he designed his church. We are not a mixture of the world and the church. We are... 100% fully of God. Amen? Amen? Who can say that today? So today, I want to share with you, there's not very many scriptures. I'm going to try to go through it fairly quickly and not keep you all day. But Revelation 18.4, we're going to start there. It says this, Then I heard a voice. This is John on the Isle of Patmos when God gave him a vision. He said, Then I heard a voice from heaven say, Come out of her, my people, so that you will not share in her sins, so that you will not receive any of her plagues. By the way, this culture is unavoidable. I just want to say that right off the bat. This culture is unavoidable because God says it's going to happen. And all you need to do is read Revelation 17 and you'll see what becomes. But God's going to deal with it. He also talks about that. And that's why we don't want to be a part of it. Amen? You don't want to be a part of it. Because God deals with it. We are called to a different culture. We are called to a different culture. We're either going to set the culture or reflect it. Amen? Amen? We're either going to set the culture or reflect the culture. And right now, Canada, the world, is in a Babylon mentality. You can be a thermostat or a thermometer. God has called us to be thermostats. Amen? We're supposed to be, and we heard it earlier, salt and light. In our, we are to be the salt and and light in our culture. Amen? Salt makes things better. And light brightens everything up. How is your light? That's why I said that this morning. How is your salt? How is your light? We're to make things better. Amen? One of the greatest examples is the story of Daniel and his friends. They were pulled out of their nation into a Babylonian culture. But they stayed true to their faith and enjoyed the culture and influenced it. They made an influence in that culture. Most people today think we have to make a choice or choose sides. 
give in to the culture or live a life of a faith of, of life? A life of faith. But when you look at Daniel, he did both. He lived in it and he influenced it. And that's what we're supposed to do. Amen? You don't have to be a part of it. But you can certainly change it. The night before Jesus went to the cross, he prayed. This is what he said, John 17, 15. My prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. And then he goes on in verse 18, he says, he says this to the Father. As you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. So we got to live with it. Amen? We don't have to be a part of it. So what is the Babylon mentality? What is it? Babylon, right now, is, is, is located in modern-day Iraq. But more than that, its, its mentality has been around since the beginning of time. And it still exists today. In fact, it's rampant today. It's been around since Eden, by the way. Babylon symbolizes an economic, political, or military system that is hostile to God. And it eventually, it's an eventual worldwide system that will encompass evil like never before. Get ready, it's written. It's written. It's going to get worse. It's birth out of Satan. And he's been doing this for a long time. He's good at it. He's roped in enough. Amen? It began, as I said, in the Garden of Eden. He showed up in the garden and tricked the couple. He got them to believe that I'm all about you and God is not, a, he's only about himself. But I'm about you. And, of course, you know the story. You go a little further past that story, and you'll find the Tower of Babel. And there he is again. And he lures, his lure is to get us to be famous. Build a tower. You'll be famous. Not to worship God, but ourselves. We're never going to drown again. We're going to build that tower. Babel means confusion. It means confusion. It's a mindset of deranged confusion. Now you ask me, are we not living in that? If you are experiencing confusion and uncertainty, it's a mindset of Babel. Amen? This is where our culture is right now. Look at the crazy things that are going on and are being accepted. Mass shootings. Can't turn the TV on, the news. There's a mass shooting somewhere. GBLT movement. Yeah, I went there. <laughs> Gender preference. I heard the other day that there was a person didn't want to be called a man or a woman, wanted to be called it. Isn't that a character on the Adams family? Wanted to be called it. Drug use. The list goes on and on and on. Rampant today in our society. Many are asking, where's God? Where's God? Well, I'll tell you where he is. He's right where we left him. He's right where we left him. And God wants to be involved, but we have an uninvited, we have uninvited him to be a part of our culture. That's what's happened. <laughs> Revelation 17 and 18 both talk about Babylon. Everything that is ungodly has its root in Babylon. You need to read that. Revelation 17 and Revelation 18. Remember, when you read that book, don't read it in the natural. 
You won't get it. You have to read it with your spiritual eyes. It's a spiritual book. Amen? And ask God to show you. We live in a culture that is addicted to pleasure, prosperity, and power. But guess what? These things can vanish in a moment. They can vanish in a moment. Babylon's motto was this. I am, and there's none beside me. There is no other beside me. That's the motto of Babylon. Babylon was a great empire, but guess what? It came down. The Romans, the Roman had a great empire, but it came down. Both of them were totally self-focused. Both the empires. Addicted to pleasure, prosperity, and power. In this Babylonian mindset, we are a self, selfie generation. It's all about me, or the me too. It's me too. Remember that? God wants me to be happy, so I am. Doing drugs and living an immoral life? It's a big acceptance today. We got five cannabis stores in Gravenhurst. Five. You tell me there's not a problem going on in our culture? Oh, but pastor, it's legal. It's okay, it's legal. Let me give you a little scripture that God has. Remember, all scripture is God-breathed. Let me give you a little one. 1 Corinthians 10, 23. Mark this down. All things are lawful, but not all things are profitable. All things are lawful, but not all things edify. But it's okay. Revelation 22, verse 14 and 15. Blessed are those who wash their robes, that they may have the right to the tree of life, and may go through the gates into the city. Outside are what? The dogs. Those who practice magic arts. I or some manuscripts say sorcery. That's not playing cards. <laughs> Let me explain to you what that is. Magic arts or sorcery is any mind-altering thing. Like drugs. But it's legal. Anything that alters the mind. The sexual immoral, the murderers, the idolaters, and everyone who loves to practice falsehood. Most of the scriptures say a lie. Who live a lie. It's all a lie. It's the devil. Amen? It's Babylon. Babylon mentality is self-building. I can do it without God. I don't need him. They ignore God and the relationship he wants to have with them. Especially when things are going great. Don't need you. How many times have we seen that? When we get sick, we call on them nonstop. Hey? Eh? We do. We call on God nonstop. Oh, you got to do something. You got to step in here. When we're okay, it's like, thank you. We'll see you when I get sick again. That's why when tragedy hits, churches are full. They're full to the rim. When things are going great, they're empty. We live in a Babylon man, a culture, folks. Babylon is self-indulging. I can do what I want. If it feels good, do it. Well, if it feels good, do it. It's about my rights. It's about my pleasure. Amen? This is rampant in our world today. Absolutely rampant in our world today. So how can we restore... Sanity. <laughs> How can we do this? One of the greatest stories in the Bible, and one of the greatest lessons we can ever learn, comes out of the book of Daniel. I'm going to share with you. Daniel 4.4. I, Nebuchadnezzar. This is the king speaking 
I, Nebuchadnezzar, was at home in my palace, content and prosperous. I was doing good. Then he had a dream. God showed up. And he had a dream. And so he wanted to interpret the dream. So he calls all his magic magicians and all these guys that knew it all, worldly. And they come and they try to tell him what was the dream about. And he didn't like it. So he kills them. No, that's wrong. Cut his head off. No, I don't like that. Get rid of him. And along comes Daniel. And Daniel says, I can tell you what it's all about. <laughs> Remember who his God was. And this is what he says. He's not in fear of anything. He knew who his God was, his faith was. He's going to be a light in that situation. He's going to be some salt here. So he comes in and he says this in verse 24. He says, this is what the dream means, your majesty. And what the Most High has declared will happen to my Lord, the King. Do you think he was making a statement? Verse 25, 26. This is it. I love this. Now listen to this. This is, his, this is interpretation of the dream. You will be driven from human society and you will live in the fields with the wild animals. You will eat grass like a cow and you will be drenched in the dew of heaven. Seven periods of time will pass while you live this way. <laughs> Until you learn that the Most High rules over the kingdoms of the world and gives them to anyone he chooses. But the stump and the roots of the tree were left in the ground. This means that you will receive your kingdom back again when you have learned that heaven rules. That needs to happen today. <laughs> and of course, here's, you know the rest of the story. He didn't listen. He didn't listen to him. And exactly one year later, he was admiring himself in the mirror, thinking, I've, I'm it. And it happened. It happened. And after seven years, just like Daniel said, seven years, he learned his lesson. He learned his lesson. Hey, <laughs> by the way, he didn't chop Daniel's head off. In fact, he loved Daniel. He was concerned because they threw Daniel, they, they tricked him and threw him into the lion's den. And Nebuchadnezzar was concerned about him. You know the story. When pride walks in, God will humble you. And I say that to the church and I say that to our nation. When pride comes in, God will humble us. And in this story, three things we can do to restore sanity to our culture. You're not going to change it because it's written. <laughs> but we can restore some sanity by being that salt and light. Listen, from number one, I'll exalt God. I will exalt God, not just on Sunday, every day. Amen? Amen. The church needs to get this. It's church every day. We don't just show up Sunday for the feel goods. It's church every day. Amen? Can I get an amen? amen? We need to exalt him. You are God and there is no other. He spoke to us today. The God of creation, the God of all things, the God who made me spoke to us today. We should exalt him. Amen? Let's be a church that's on fire for God. People come in and they see something's going on. That's why we say, did you come expecting? Good, you're going to be a part of something going on. Amen? Well, we need to get the fire back. If we exalt God, we won't exalt ourselves. And we will survive anything culture does. Amen? Number two, I will acknowledge God. Acknowledge him and his ways because they're right. They're right. This is our right. This is the manual. Amen? Let me tell you something. 
and I want to look right at the camera. If this book offends you, then you have a problem. Amen? If it offends you, then you have a problem. Acknowledge him in all your ways. When you give Jesus everything, culture can't touch you. Amen? It can't touch you. And the third thing is I will humble myself. I will humble myself. Humility is coming. You can initiate it or life will. Just like Nebuchadnezzar. Culture will. The devil will. Someone will. It's either humility or humiliation. Amen? Church bells. Sign from heaven. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> humility is coming to our country. Insanity is coming to everyone who has the Babylon mentality. But sanity can be restored by Jesus. Peace comes through Jesus. Not what's going on out there or not what the government says. Hallelujah. When we humble ourselves, God doesn't leave us down there. He lifts us up. Amen? And I want to leave you with this. A man on his face can never fall from that position. Stay low, serve God, serve people, and make it all about Jesus. This man over here has got a book. It says it's all about Jesus. You may want to read it. It's all about him, not Babylon. Hallelujah. And that's my message today. Next week, we're going to talk about Revelation 17.5. You may want to get a little bit of a heads up on that. It's interesting. It's interesting. And we are there. We are there. We live in a Babylonian uh, culture, folks. But we are the salt and the light. Amen? And I don't, I, I, I feel the Lord saying something very strongly today to his church. Come out of it. If you're dealing with any stuff from it, get out of it. Get out of it. Heed the warning of the Lord today, church. Because I believe the time is short. Amen? Our time is short. We don't know what's... I have no idea how long my life will be. It can be over as soon as I leave the building. But I want to be counted in. I want to be salt and light for him. Amen? We want to be known as a salt and light church. Hallelujah. Come on, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you that you speak to us. We thank you that you warn us ahead of time. We thank you for your unchanging word. Lord, it never changes. We may alter it a few times, but you say, my word is my word. And we thank you for that. Father, I pray that in the coming days we would understand this and that we would realize where we are in, 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 the, in, the, uh, in the future here or at, in time, that we are close to your return. And Father, we want to be 100% for you. Thank you for your, your revelation to John. We thank you for the warnings of the churches. And Father, we ask that you heed those warnings to us as we move forward. We know, Father, that things are going to get worse, but we know we have to live here. It's just like in Daniel's days. Father, we can be a Daniel's in this time that we live in. Father, I pray for each one of us that we would have a Daniel mentality and not a Babylonian mentality. Father, bless each person here today. Keep them safe. Protect them, Father. Continue to speak to them. Download to them as we continue to move forward in your kingdom here in this part of your vineyard. And I ask this in your mighty holy name. Thank you, Lord, for speaking to us today. Let it not fall to the ground, but let us receive that and run with it, Father. 
In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Thank you all. And remember, listen, if you're dealing with anything, we've got great prayer warriors and a great altar team. You can come forward. We can pray for you. But have a blessed, wonderful day. And share Jesus. Share Jesus with a family member, a friend. Amen. Be the salt and light. God bless you.